Hi there, Sine Naylor here, and I'd like to bring you a video that I think you'll find of a value. Uh, basically, I've been doing some additional research on how to increase the amount of traffic that I want to send to my blog or an offer page or uh, a landing page, some type of uh, affiliate uh, program. Uh, basically, just how to get more. Uh, so I'm going to. I've done some research. I've compiled it uh, into a mind map to help me understand it and help me process the information. And I'm going to share that with you now. Basically, I'm going to be covering ten points. Uh, the first of which is advertising. Um, advertising will cover pay-per-click, banner ads, Facebook, social advertising. Uh, pretty much any place that you can spend money to buy traffic to your website. Next we'll cover getting social, connecting with uh, your audience, your target audience, connecting on your social platforms, how to build those social platforms, um, and the value that it gives you bringing traffic in. Next I'm going to tell you to mix it up. Don't do just one type of content over and over and over. Uh, make it short, make it long, make it uh, video, make it audio. Just mix it up basically and that'll help keep your audience engaged. I'm also going to tell you that you really need to spend a little time working on your headlines. They need to be irresistible or they need to be little mini ads so when people read your headlines they understand exactly what value they're going to get if they click on the link and then pursue your content. We're also going to take a look at SEO, the on-page factors in bringing in new traffic using SEO techniques. Now, SEO is not the be-all, end-all, and to be clear, SEO really doesn't help you build your brand, which is one of the other things we're going to be discussing, but SEO does help you get traffic. There's no doubt about that. I also want to tell you about blogging, whether it's blogging on your own personal blog or guest blogging uh, on some type of authority site uh, that you found within your niche. There's a lot to be said for blogging and the kind of eyeballs it can bring to your offer, your website, your blog. I'm also going to suggest that you post some valuable content out to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a network of professionals and these are the type of people that you want to speak to uh, and, and there's just some really good opportunities for you to be publishing content and getting it read out on LinkedIn. You also really need to take a moment and, and figure out a way to be responsive. Your website, your offer, your landing page needs to work excellent on either the desktop, the tablet, or the phone. If it doesn't, you're going to lose visitors. Uh, they're going to, you know, perhaps they found your content uh, and then they bookmarked it or sent it to their phone to be read while they're sitting in the doctor's waiting office. And when they go to that link, if they can't read it on your phone, they're upset they're going to leave. There's also a certain amount of value that can be found in linking internally on your blog site. There's a lot of good content on your site. Help your users find that content by internally linking to it. When, you, when you're on a page that talks about something else you've written, link to that. Finally, we're going to talk about testing, tracking, and measuring your results. It's one thing to uh, put content out there and do things to increase traffic, but if you don't know if it's having a measurable effect, you don't know if you're wasting your time, you don't know if you're wasting your money, uh, and you really need to know if what you're doing is working. I'm also going to suggest that you research your competition. They're out there doing the same thing you are. They may be doing it better. So research your competition and you can reverse engineer it. This will help you get a little better clarity on what it is you're trying to do as well. So those are the 10 things we're going to cover in getting more traffic to your website. Come on, let's get started. The first area I'd like to talk about is advertising. Now I listed it first because quite simply it is the most effective way to get eyeballs on your landing page, your offer, your blog, wherever it is you're trying to get traffic. And that paid advertisement falls into about four main categories. Now this is not the be all end all list but it breaks down into these four basic categories. There's pay-per-click advertising or what's known as PPC. Pay-per-click advertising um, allows you to bid on keywords that you believe your target audience is going to be using to find your content. So you can do that on AdWords, uh, Google AdWords, Bing and Yahoo. 
Uh, Amazon has a new uh, ad network that's very effective. Um, and Ad Roll allows you to retarget those that um, don't necessarily buy the first visit. So this video isn't a be all end all about how to use these. As a matter of fact, I do have some learning resources here. But basically, it boils down to this you're going to be paying to find eyeballs for your website. You're going to be going out to the networks, you're going to be bidding on keywords, and you have some control over this. You can be very aggressive, you can bid very high, and you can get some guaranteed eyeballs on your uh, your web page very, very quickly. Or if you want to take a less aggressive stance, if you want to just kind of see how things go and, and capture some clicks and some impressions and see what's working and what's not, you can uh, bid less um, and set it up on a schedule. You've got quite a bit of control in how quickly you go through your budget. Now, in addition to pay-per-click, there is social media advertising. Facebook is a perfect example of this. They have an ad platform that's very accessible to uh, the first-time buyer, if you will. Uh, they are tracking by demographics. They make it very inexpensive for you to go in and bid on uh, your keywords and to be seen by the people you want to be seen by. Uh, ditto for LinkedIn, although I don't believe their ad platform is quite as aggressive or quite as uh, dialed in. Now, each one of these items that you see with a light bulb are additional resources. I have curated some really good content that will help you learn more about what it is you're trying to do. The last two that I talk about are, in my opinion, kind of related. And that's display advertising through like the CPA networks or banner networks and text link advertising. Now both of these offer you similar opportunities to spend money to get eyeballs on your, uh, your web page. One does it by allowing um, advertisers or other people out in the web to place your ad on their website in exchange for a small commission. So you would go out to this one of the CPA networks, you'd um, put together your graphics, put together your banners, put together your offer, if you will, and people who have websites that are interested in advertising for you will go find your ad, place it on their uh, page, their blog, wherever, and everybody who sees it and clicks, you get you pay them a small percentage. Um, now, text link advertising is similar to, to the CPA networks, but it's done with text links. And frankly, I, I feel text links has a lot of effectiveness that some of the banners don't have. For example, people are kind of ad blind to banners, um, whereas if they're reading content and embedded within that content is a text link, the chances of them clicking it and following it off the site to whatever resource it's pointing to are pretty high. So those are the four main categories for advertising. The second method of driving more traffic to your web page is getting social. And by that I mean get out there and join the conversations that are already taking place within your market. Um, Twitter is a great place to build trust with your target audience. These people are having conversations with each other, they're asking questions, and you can join that conversation. Look for, do searches for hashtags that people are using. Um, always make sure you add hashtags to your conversations, to your replies, to the questions that you ask, uh, because it gives them a way to uh, search for that content and find more about it. Make sure you reply to any questions asked within your community. Now I use a tool called TweetDeck. Hoot, Hootsuite is also a really good tool to help you see what's being asked within your community. Um, I do a, a column. I add a column that's, you know, for example, within my marketplace. I add the keywords WordPress, a question mark, maybe the word how, and then um, I add that as a column to TweetDeck and what happens is anytime those two things or three things come up in the, the Twitter timeline I'm I'm seeing it it's it's going right to my uh, my TweetDeck column so I can at the end of end of the day or the beginning of the day whenever I've got a, you know 20 minutes to sit down and answer questions 
I can go through that list of questions and answer them. Do it without asking for anything in return and you will build trust with your target audience. Now it is okay to send them links to you know resources or how to's or something it, if it answers the question that they've asked. Don't just you know add a link at the back side of every tweet you put out there that sends them to your offer. People will recognize that for what it is and you won't get new followers. Ditto on Facebook. Do not use it as a broadcast channel. Make sure you do always reply to comments that are being added to your Facebook page. Answer any questions that are being asked. And develop a good posting strategy that helps people connect with you, connect with your content, without turning them off. Google Plus is another great channel for putting your information out there. Like Twitter or Facebook, it's you, you have your own page, your own profile, and your own set of followers. And the people that follow you are going to be kind of dialed in for the group that you uh, are trying to connect with. So here are a couple of articles on how to, you know, how to build that strategy. If you've got digital content or uh, image-heavy content. Uh, Pinterest and Instagram are great tools for getting pictures of what you're doing out there in the marketplace. And if the picture connects back to your page, uh, then you get more eyeballs coming coming onto it that way. Aggregator sites like Reddit, Dig, StumbleUpon, and Technorati are also good channels for you to put your content out there. Now, word of warning, and this is true of any social network, don't just broadcast, don't just run, quote, ads. Put your good comment-worthy content out there to the aggregator sites, and people will connect with it. People will follow it back to your website, and again, you're building trust. So use these methods, uh, these social channels, to connect with your target audience and begin building more traffic to your web page. So that's, uh, that's it. Go get social. Third method of getting more traffic is not necessarily a traffic getting method. It's more a don't repel traffic method. Mix up your content. Vary your length. Vary your format. If you're publishing content pretty regularly and it's always the same, it's text, it's bland, it's 300 words, um, you're kind of training your readers to be turned off by it. So mix it up. You've got different kind of readers out there uh, that you're going to need to appeal to. So vary the length, vary the format, uh, use video sometimes, audio sometimes, text sometimes, uh, provide downloadable PDFs or images you know, that connect with them. You are appealing to different types of readers. There are those that will you know, do a flyby of your site and scan, detail scan, for specific uh, questions that they're trying to answer. Um, there are also scanners out there looking to see if the content applies to them before they read it. Uh, there are also readers who definitely want multimedia videos, images, PDFs, documents, things of that nature. So you want to appeal to a wide variety of readers. Intersperse shorter news-based kind of format with long-form content as well. And the, you can spend time interviewing inter industry thought leaders to kind of help connect your target audience with you as an authority site. Bring in an, an industry leader within the, the niche that you're trying to uh, connect with and interview a, a, a thought leader and publish that. The name alone will be enough to drive some, uh, some readers over to your content. So while not technically a direct method of, of building traffic, it is an important part to not repelling traffic. The fourth method of getting more traffic, like the third, is not so much about a traffic channel as about making the traffic channels you do have more effective. Write irresistible headlines. Be compelling. They have to want to read your content after they see your headlines. So write 20 and then review them. And if you can, split test them with friends or family. Um, you know, write 20 versions of it and then go ask somebody, you know, which one of these would make you want to read the content if it was something that appealed to you. So definitely split test your headlines. There are a couple of tools out there and here are some articles that I found for writing good headlines. Um, and you know, I've, I've spent some money, I've invested in a couple of tools, a couple of books that help me write better headlines. I don't always implement it the way I should, so do as I say, not as I do. 
uh, and there are free online tools out there that will help you generate good content I'm sorry good headlines so check those out uh, as a matter of fact uh, if you come back here and download the um, the PDF or if you visit MindMeister and click on the link to, to see this particular mind map I will add a link right down here to the tool that I use that kinda lets you fill in the blanks and will help you generate a really good headline so that's the fourth uh, method of getting more traffic again not a traffic channel more a um, channel improvement okay there you go here are tools to help with your headlines one is a headline wizard you fill in the blanks and it helps you generate a headline the other is a headline analyzer you put in a headline you come up with and it analyzes what you've written and makes suggestions on how to make it better so I hope these additional tools help uh, click the circle link here to follow that off to where those resources are our fifth method of getting more traffic is as important as anything else I've come up with that's SEO helping the search engines understand the content that you are making available is critical to getting found by the searchers that are at the search engines looking for the content that you offer there are a number of ways that you can help identify your content and convince Google that you are relevant to the term that the searcher has put in the search engine those are title tag, description tag, alt tag, bolding and italicizing the keywords using the H1, 2, and 3 keywords uh, appropriately, using the keywords within the content body. And you, you wouldn't believe how many people don't do this one thing correctly. You also want to make sure that you target long tail keywords. Uh, make sure that you're connecting with the actual phrase that they're using uh, so that when they when your content comes up and that's being used in your title tag and in the description um, it connects more readily with your target audience something else to do is use the schema micro data now I know not too many people know what that's about so I have provided a link here to give you some help with that um, but basically schema micro data is the schema that you add to your HTML code that helps the search engine decipher the content on your pages more effectively and this of course in turn can increase your visibility if the search engine is convinced they're much more likely to serve your content so don't skip that step also make sure that your site is fast uh, beginning uh, just a while back Google began factoring in your page load speed as a part of how relevant uh, or, or how likely they are to s serve your content to the readers so you could have the very best content in the world but if it takes 29 seconds for your page to load Google is not going to serve that to the searcher because Google's goal is a good experience for the searcher so Google isn't going to serve them something that they're not going to click on or that they're going to be frustrated on so I have created a couple of articles that will really dial in and help you understand on-page SEO better and the tools that you can use to help implement that I have provided links to both those articles there's two parts uh, the first part is what to do before you publish your content the second part is what to do during the publication process I also have written a very detailed article of how to get your SEO and your online marketing working together cohesively to help connect you with your target audience so SEO is hugely important and what I consider um, one of the most effective ways to get you found by the people who are looking for your content so that's number five okay let's talk about blogging whether it be your own personal blog or get a posting as a guest publisher on someone else's blog ideally an authoritative site or reputable site there's a lot of eyeballs that you can bring in to your offer your your website your blog uh, by publishing this way uh, as a matter of fact if you look uh, on my blog I do allow guest posts now I have guidelines that I expect authors to adhere to but I do allow that uh, simply because you know I'm I'm broadening my uh, discussion I'm letting experts in other areas add to the overall uh, information that I'm making available to you here so it adds benefit to me as the blogger and it adds benefit to that person 
as the guest blogger because I'm allowing them to publish a link back to something that's important to them. You can also, within the blogging community, add comments to other blogs in your industry or niche. Um, and I do want to tell you that you need to make sure when you're blogging, whether it's on yours or someone else's, that you add value. Not just content, add value. And I, I went into some detail here, and I'll, I'll let you know that, um, again, this is not my own unique information. I've gathered this up and aggregated it from a number of different sources. But to add value, you may have to become a real expert on your subject. And if you're not already an expert, you must be willing to become an expert. Ideally, you need to back up your findings or your suggestions or your information with data, real live data. And you can get that data from other places. It doesn't necessarily have to come from within your own organization. You need to study and research and observe. Uh, particularly if you don't have your own data to quote or use. Now there are places that you can get this kind of data, which again I'll link to down in the bottom, uh, so I, I recommend you spend a little time there. Um, also consider being entertaining. Uh, use humor. And if you do create a video or a presentation, keep it under 18 minutes. Um, make sure you use good visuals and infographics, that you add stories, uh, memes and gifs are possible. Um, it, these are all ways that you can entertain and you can use humor in your, bl your blog content to do that. Next, be quotable. Add value. A and again, this is, uh, this is a continuation of this uh, conversation right here. By that I mean this. And um, I'm going to thank you, Rich, for a great video you put together on uh, the type of content that you need to put out there to add value. So I've got a checklist. This link leads to Rich's article, uh, but basically he, he discusses the importance of being one of a kind in your content, being relevant to what they're searching for, being helpful in some way, and obviously being uniquely valuable and a great user experience. If you can do those five things, then you're adding value to the overall niche. Finally, like I mentioned earlier, invite others to guest post on your blog. So blogging is a great way to bring eyeballs. Number seven in our ways to get more traffic on your web page is LinkedIn, posting content to LinkedIn. Now please note that LinkedIn is a professional network. These are connections made within professional niches. So you want to write your content that speaks to them. Uh, again, probably they are some of them are your target audience so write the articles that those professionals in your network will like and use at the same time just like any of your other social profiles you do need to work to build your LinkedIn network establish new connections um, follow connections from one of your professionals in your network to another uh, to see who they're recommending to see who they are connected with follow that and make those connections I have provided a resource here to how to use LinkedIn. It's the ultimate list of LinkedIn tips, and it's one of those things that I read and use uh, before I began building my LinkedIn network. LinkedIn is a great way to bring eyeballs to your web page, your blog, or your uh, website. Okay, our eighth method is more like number three, mixing it up, and number four, irresistible headlines. And number five, on-page SEO. It's not directly a traffic channel, but it is a way to prevent the traffic that you are getting from bailing on you early. Your site, your web page has to be responsive. If a visitor lands on your uh, web page on, on their phone uh, and goes to desktop, that's one direction and likely the appearance will be good. But if they start out on the desktop and then get interrupted, they leave and now they're sitting in a waiting room and they bring it up on their phone and they can no longer read or recognize your content, you've lost them. They're pretty much done. The chances of them going back to the desktop at a later date uh, are pretty slim. There are studies that show if you put a specific call to action above the fold, you're going to get a 91% click-through rate. Uh, make sure that call to action is very specific and relative to them. There are also studies that show a single click to call above the fold. In other words, 
um, you've you've placed your telephone number on the website if you make that link if you make that telephone number clickable on the mobile device uh, you're going to get a much better conversion rate I've included how to make that number clickable uh, in your HTML in your web page just copy and paste from the bracket a to the closing bracket a at the begin at the end now obviously switch this out with your number not mine but if you do it in this way it will be clickable for your target audience on their mobile device make sure you write clear and enticing buttons to um, links of your inventory your products uh, any directions that you've done and place this information below the fold um, if you do this you'll get a 37 percent reduction in your bounce rate in other words you know you're, you're causing them to scroll you're giving them ways to uh, visit more of your content and you're being meaningful in that and if they click it and they stay on that that definitely counts uh, in your favor it reduces the number of bounces that you get now a, a quick explanation a bounce rate is when someone lands on your page views that one page and then leaves in other words it's one page and then bounce instead of one page and then that leads them to another page to another page to another page so you want to reduce your bounce rate that's one of the things that Google looks at in deciding whether or not your content is relevant I have put together a short article on my blog I've placed a link for it here um, more of an explanation about why responsive web design is so important and a book that I recommend and, and read on the subject that can help you uh, make changes to your website so that it can be more responsive so that wraps number eight the number nine method of getting more traffic is to utilize traffic you've already sold in other words they're on your site link internally uh, to some of your relevant content and you'll get them to consume more of your content now as this graphic depicts basically uh, you're gonna have several pages that uh, have authority that you've written uh, uh, that go into quite a bit of detail about your subject matter and then you're gonna have ancillary uh, pages or, or additional content that kinda that should point back to those big pages that helps your SEO that helps your link juice that helps Google understand what you consider the most important aspects of your website and it also provides a, a new channel a new method for your visitors your target audience whom we've already captured to find more of your content again the more of the content that they find the more they come to know like and trust you um, and that always helps so I've written um, a couple of articles uh, and and Moses has written an article I've provided links to both um, but anytime you publish something new on your website or your blog you should keep an eye out for uh, opportunities to link back to those authority pages in other words if I'm writing an article and I reference something or I mention something that I wrote in another article don't just mention it link to it provide a link back to that article and make sure that the anchor text is good and valid so that Google understands it as well as your customer so again number nine is less about uh, driving brand new traffic and more about utilizing the traffic you've already gotten number ten in our ways of getting more traffic is less about driving more traffic and more about knowing what's working and in order to do that you need to test track and measure what you're doing to find out what's working and what's not now Google Analytics is a good place to begin your your business intelligence search uh, they offer some really good tools some really good reports for telling you what's working and what's not they also provide a B split testing uh, although they're not the only one there are other uh, websites and there's software you can purchase that will help you with your a B split testing um, I've provided a couple of articles here for how to get more out of that and uh, things that you can do today to make that work use the business intelligence gathering tools like Google Analytics or whomever you use um, to export the reports and compare them over time keep an eye out for what's working um, once you know what's working do more of that once you know what's not working either a B split test that to get it working or stop doing it if it's not working stop um, I've also provided a couple of other articles here uh, for trapping traffic uh, about you know seeing where they come from where they go this is an article I wrote um, and it'll help detail some of what you're looking for 
and then here's an article from entrepreneur about tracking the metrics that could help boost your sales there are metrics that you need to know in order to boost your sales now something else to note your competition is out there doing things research them what they're doing um, and how they're doing it what's working for them uh, there are tools that you can uh, download and install or use uh, online that will help you decipher what it is they're doing right uh, follow.net is um, a, a way to go in and get you know some some surveillance on what they're doing that's working SEO IQ is another tool for determining what they're doing that's working from an SEO standpoint Quirk Search Status is another tool for determining uh, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And that's, that's more to do with SEO, but again, if it's working for them, you need to be emulating that. I use a couple of tools like Market Samurai and SpyFu to also deconstruct what my competition is doing. So these are tools, and, and by the way, make sure you download the, uh, the mind map uh, or the PDF, either one. Um, to get these links, to get access to, you know, the the tools and the resources that I'm recommending. Now I will tell you, you know, to be 100% compliant, a couple of the tools that I'm recommending, I am an affiliate for, meaning, you know, if you purchase based on my recommendation, I do make a small commission, and that's as it should be. I've done the time and energy and and the research to determine is this a tool that's going to be effective for you. Um, so you know, a small commission is is not a bad reward for that. Okay, so that's 10 ways that you can increase your traffic uh, to your website, your blog, your offer, whatever. That's the 10 ways. I hope you have found this mind map and this video to be of some help. Uh, if so, look below, like it, uh, recommend it, tell your friends. Uh, anything you can do to help me get the message out is definitely appreciated. Look for more of this type of content on my main site at senenaylor.com or more how-to videos on videos.bysenay.com. So this is Sene signing out. Uh, appreciate your attention. I hope this unscripted video has helped.